Hey gang, this is George from EDC Leather and Holster Makers Bootcamp. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing center of gravity, uh, both hanging on, a, on your firearm and then also laying flat. And it's important some belt loop placement and location of the belt. So what we want to achieve is we find the center of gravity on the firearm as it's hanging, okay? When we determine that center of gravity, this will be for zero degree, if I can place this area right here kind of equally between the belt slots, I'm going to lower the perceived weight of the firearm in the holster. Then, as you know, we're also concerned about the height of the belt and causing flop on the firearm. What we're going to do a little bit different is a lot of guys, and we are the same, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, we have blue guns. Blue guns do not represent the center of gravity very well. So you're going to take some archetypes of firearms. You're going to determine what you think is important on them. And then you're going to adjust from there. And you'll find they're all pretty similar. But this is just a, kind of a little bit of brain candy to get it going. What we're going to be working with today is going to be a Browning High Power. A little Glock 43. A Glock 48. And an HKP 30. So these are my firearms, that's why it's kind of a weird little collection. But we're going to be actually putting loaded mags into them, and here's how we're going to do this. If you can look right here, you see there is no primer in the primer cup, there's no powder in this, and what I did is I had Garrett go ahead and basically reload me some ammo with no powder, no primers, just for this experiment. So we will be using full, fully loaded mags, to see the difference that it makes in each firearm. Okay, so uh, I believe this one here, Jacob, did this one go in this one? I believe is what you had. So I'll put that back in there in a minute. I got grease on my hands, so I'm fixing one of the belt machines. There we go. Let's start out with the high power. 1911 fi uh, firearm, most of the 1911s will be very similar to this. We're gonna check it. We're going to make sure it's clear. I am not going to put a round into the chamber. I am going to go ahead and put the safety on. Okay, so we'll start out without it. So without a mag, just hanging, if I wanted to get about 8 degree cant, my center of gravity would be right about here, right on the maggot release. Do you see that? Okay, now if I want to deal with the other center of gravity, I'm going to be taking and sliding this over, and it's going to be right here where the frame comes up. And I'm going to start maneuvering this around until it starts to rotate back. And that's going to get me about the center of gravity. So without a mag in it, the center of gravity is just about here on the flop. Okay, and right here at the mag release of that. So if I'm doing a blue gun, look at what happens. I come right to the mag, pretty doggone close, ain't it, guys? Okay, and if I do it on the flop, I'm going to put it right on the trigger. And I balance out pretty well right there. Okay, so that's what we can do with a blue gun. So let's take and drop a mag into this thing. Okay, and we're not putting one in the chamber, and these are no powder, no primers. Now I've added a whole bunch of weight back here. Look at where I have to go on the hang now to hit zero degrees. Look at that. I've moved a full quarter inch this way. So on your pattern or your stitch trace, make a mark about a quarter inch up from the mag release. That's going to be center of gravity on a Browning and most 1911s, but not all. Remember, this is double stack 9 versus single stack uh, uh, 45. But what if we wanted to do 8 degrees? Why don't we come back a little bit and start hanging? It's a little bit too much. And I see about an eighth inch in front. You know, that took a full eighth of an inch to make that difference for a natural hang, okay, on that center of gravity. Let's take a look here now. It's going to be pretty cool, gang. I got to hold my little Sharpie. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for the flop, and where it's going to hit is right here on the sculpting. So that's going to cause a little bit of problem on the frame. 
but I can tell you, there's where I got the rotation. My rotation came back from the face of the trigger all the way back to here. So now make a little mark here on your pad. So your center of gravity on the hang on the flop is going to be right about there with the fully loaded mag. Now you're not going to be able to get that because we don't want our belt all the way up here when we're putting the firearm in the holster. We don't want our belt all the way up here. We don't want to cover the mag and we want to have a full combat grip. So we're going to move our belt down to the face of the trigger. Give us a one inch grip relief here, okay? But we know our center of gravity. We want to get that as close as possible to dead nut center in between the belt slots. So, you've always heard us tell you, again and again and again, do a one inch both sides for the belt slots. An inch this way, inch this way. Okay, so that's okay, and that can be inch to center to center is usually what the guys do, which is just fine. But let's take a look at this. This is a half inch trigger guard right here. See that? This is a 3 8 trigger guard. There's no reason to go that full one inch out on this particular firearm. So keep this stuff in mind. And our goal is, is to get that center of gravity on the hang as close as possible to being centered between the two belt loops. This will reduce the perceived weight of the firearm to your client, and he'll just think that you're magic. Let's take a look at a couple other firearms. Glock 43, single stack. And how many rounds is this here, Mag? Six rounds. Six rounds plus one in the pipe. Once again, we're not putting one in the pipe. Okay? Glocks you're going to find, regardless of the model, are fairly similar, but this is a single stack. So I'm going to come all the way up here at the juncture of the frame and the slide, and I find out that's a zero degree center of gravity. If I come just below, just below this molding right here, actually a little bit on it, I start rolling at about eight degrees. Experiment for whichever cant you're wanting to find to do that. Now let's take a look at the flop. Let's go right behind the trigger guard. That worked on the browning, didn't it? We're going to find this molding right here is going to affect us again. Trying to get here where I can hang, hang on to this here. <laughs> and it's right on that molding line, so it's going to be hard for me to catch a balance point. It's going to be hard. We'll try it on another one of the Glocks. But you saw how much that was different than the single stack knife. Let's go to a Glock 48. This is a Glock 48 with the mod on it. Uh, this has got a steel mag, and I believe she's holding 15 rounds. Okay, same slide, or you know, I mean, same thing as the Glock 43X, but 15 rounds, and it's a Glock 48, which is much prettier. Okay. Let's take that same rule of thumb we did. If we put it right here on this double stack. You see what happened? Because it's double stack, we've got to move that center of gravity back a little bit. Looky there. And if I want to go eight degrees, I'm going to come right above the uh, the ejection, the mag, mag ejector. See how much the double stack changed that? You're going to find that to be very similar on Glock 17s as well, and Glock 19s. Okay, HK, another one, double stack. Okay, so let's see where this one here sits. Oh, my greasy hands, it's right on. Zero degree, comes right into here. Okay, but what if I want to do eight degrees? I gotta move almost a quarter inch down. Let's see if we can get the flop because we're gonna be on this control. We're finding that to hit right about here. So notice the center of gravity for this firearm, both this way and this way, are almost in the same place on the flop and on the hang. Uh, this is about $1,300 gets you. A very well-designed, very balanced firearm. Okay. okay, gang, so we've looked at several different firearms, so a single stack and double stack, uh, both steel and poly firearms. 
And, and we've seen some of the differences of center of gravity, both on the flop and on the hang. Um, is experimenting with these rules going to make your holster the standout and, and, and just something that nobody else has ever seen? No, sir, it's not. All right. But these attentions to these details can just bring your game up a little bit and also get your head in the game when you're designing and trying to find out where things are going to work best for you. So this is just one of the details that we look at when we're doing holster design. I hope that you find it helpful and I 